Good morning. It is October the 21st. We'll be starting in Jeremiah 37 uh, with verse 1. Now King Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned instead of Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. But, ne but neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land gave heed to the words of the Lord, which he spoke by the prophet Jeremiah. And Zedekiah the king sent Jehuchal, the son of Shelemiah, and Zephiah, the son of Maasiah, the priest, to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now to the Lord our God for us. Now Jeremiah was coming and going among the people, for they had not yet put him in prison. Then Pharaoh's army came up from Egypt, and when the Chaldeans were besieging Jerusalem, heard news of them, they departed from Jerusalem. Then the word of the Lord came to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus you shall say to the king of Judah, who sent you to me to inquire of me, Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come up to help with you, return, will return to Egypt, to their own land. And the Chaldeans shall come back and fight against the city, and take it, and burn it with fire. Thus says the Lord, Do not deceive yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans will surely depart from us, for they will not depart. For though you had defeated the whole army of the Chaldeans who fight against you, and there remained only wounded men among them, they would rise up every man in his tent and burn the city with fire. And it happened when the army of the Chaldeans left the siege of Jerusalem for fear of Pharaoh's army, that Jeremiah went out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin to claim his property there among the people. And when he was in the gate of Benjamin, a captain of the guard was there, whose name was Erijah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah. And he seized Jeremiah the prophet, saying, you are defecting to the Chaldeans. Then Jeremiah said, False, I am not defecting to the Chaldeans, but he did not listen to him. So Erijah seized Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. Therefore the princes were angry with Jeremiah, and they struck him and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had made that the prison. When Jeremiah entered the dungeon and the cells, and Jeremiah had remained there many days. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took him out. The king asked him secretly in his house and said, Is there any word from the Lord? And Jeremiah said, There is. Then he said, You shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. Moreover, Jeremiah said to king Zedekiah, What offense have I committed against you, against your servants or against this people, that you have put me in prison? Where now are your prophets and the prophesied to to you saying the king of babylon will not come against you or against this land therefore please hear now O my lord the king please let my petition be accepted before you and do not make me return to the house of jonathan the scribe lest i die there then zedekiah the king commanded that they should commit jeremiah to the court of the prison and that they should give him daily a piece of bread from the baker's street until all the bread in the city was gone. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Chapter 38. <clears throat> now Shephatiah, the son of Matan, Gedaliah, the son of Pasher, Jukal, the son of Shilamiah, and Pasher, the son of Malchiah, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken to all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord. He who remains in the city shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. But he who goes over to the Chaldeans shall live. His life shall be as a prize to him, and he shall live. Thus says the Lord, This city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Therefore the princes said to the king, Please let this man be put to death. For thus he weakens the hands of the men of war who remain in the city, and the hands of the people by speaking such words to them. For this man does not seek the welfare of this people, but their harm. Then Zedekiah the king said, Look, he is in your hand, for the king can do nothing against you. So they took Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon, and Melchiah the king's son, which was in the court of the prison, and they let Jeremiah down with ropes. And in the dungeon there was no water but mire, so Jeremiah sank in the mire. Now ebed Melech the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs, who was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon when the king was sitting at the gate of Benjamin. 
Ebed Melech went out of the king's house and spoke to the king, saying, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon. And he is likely to die from hunger in that place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded Ebed Melech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from here thirty men with you, and lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he dies. So Ebed Melech took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury, and took from there old cloths and old rags, and let them down by ropes into the dungeon to Jeremiah. Then Ebed Melech the Ethiopian said to Jeremiah, Please put these old clothes and rags under your armpits, under the ropes. So Jeremiah did so. So they pulled Jeremiah up with the ropes and lifted him out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Then Zedekiah the king sent and had Jeremiah the prophet brought to him at the third entrance of the house of the Lord. And the king said to Jeremiah, I will ask you something. Hide nothing from me. Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, If I declare it to you, will you not surely put me to death? And if I give you advice, you will not listen to me. So Zedekiah the king swore secretly to Jeremiah, saying, As the Lord lives who made our very souls, I will not put you to death, nor will I give you into the hand of these men who seek your life. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, If you surely surrender to the king of Babylon's princes, then your soul shall live. This city shall not be burned with fire, and you and your house shall live. But if you do not surrender to the king of Babylon's princes, then this city shall be given into the hand of the Chaldeans. They shall burn it with fire, and you shall not escape from their hand. And Zedekiah the king said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have defected to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand, and they abuse me. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver you. Please obey the voice of the Lord which I speak to you. So it shall be well with you, and your soul shall live. But if you refuse to surrender, that is the word that the Lord has shown me. Now behold, all the women who are left in the king of Judah's house shall be surrendered to the king of Babylon's princes. And the, those women shall say, Your close friends have set upon you and prevailed against you. Your feet have sunk in the mire and they have turned away. So they shall surrender all your wives and children to the Chaldeans. You shall not escape from their hand but shall be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon, and you shall cause the city to be burned with fire. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, Let no one know of these words, and you shall not die. But if the princes hear that I have talked with you, and they come to you and say to you, Declare to us what you have said to the king, and also what the king said to you, do not hide it from us, and we will not put you to death. Then you shall say to them, I presented my request before the king, that he would not make me return to Jonathan's house to die there. Then all the princes came to Jeremiah and asked him, and he told them according to these words that the king had commanded. So they stopped speaking with him, for the conversation had not been heard. Now Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison until the day that Jerusalem was taken, and he was there when Jerusalem was taken. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Let as many bondservants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and his doctrine may not be blasphemed. And those who have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather serve them because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. Teach and exhort these things. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such withdraw yourselves. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. <clears throat> but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, from which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, 
flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, and let them be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Psalm 89 Verse beginning in verse 38. But you have cast us off and abhorred. You have been furious with your anointed. You have renounced the covenant of your servant. You have profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. You have broken down all his hedges. You have brought his strongholds to ruin. All who pass by the way plunder him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his adversaries. You have made all his enemies rejoice. You have also turned back the edge of his sword, and you have not sustained him in the battle. You have made his glory cease, and cast his throne down to the ground. The days of his youth you have shortened. You have covered him with shame. Selah. How long, Lord? Will you hide yourself forever? Will your wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is. For what futility have you created, all the children of men? What man can live and not see death? Can he deliver his life from the power of the grave? Selah. Lord, where are your former loving kindnesses which you swore to David in your truth? Remember the Lord, the reproach of your servants, how I bear in my bosom the reproach of all the many peoples with which your enemies have reproached, O Lord, with which they have reproached the footsteps of your anointed. Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen and amen. Proverbs 25, verse 28. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. And that's it for today's reading. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word, just for giving it to us, Lord. And may we just take heed to it, Lord. We see that Jeremiah is giving out your word, giving out the truth, and yet, It's being rejected over and over again. And Lord, I pray that we would not be like that, but we would look at your word, that we would take it for the truth that it is, and that we would apply it to our lives and just be obedient to serve and to follow you. And so Lord, would you go before us today, fill us with your spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.